Hey guys, we are finally in the textbook. <laughs> Chapter one, two section later. one. Yes, two months. Italy, the birthplace of the Renaissance. Mr. Lohner, what does Renaissance mean? It means a rebirth. Ooh. All right, so in the Middle Ages, we kind of went backwards in the beginning of the Middle Ages. We had the Dark Ages. And education. And that plague. Yeah, and the plague. Education started rising in the later Middle Ages, and we'll see. Um, some great art and architecture, but the Renaissance, it really explodes. Who's that famous, the scene. famous lady? It looks like you a little bit. No, when you, when you had hair. You Long know? flowing lock. <laughs> that is the Mona Lisa, oh, yeah. painted by Leonardo, Leonardo. DiCaprio. Nope. No, oh, Leonardo the Ninja Turtle. Oh, okay. And the painting to the right? Uh, the School of Athens by Raphael. Ooh, very Ooh. impressive. Ah. Is that it? It's that sounds good. It's frozen. Ah! Go. <laughs> so main idea, as Mr. Lobner said, the Renaissance is the rebirth of learning. And people today consider this time period to be the beginning of modern times. Because coming from the Middle Ages, we see this you know, increase and in influence of art, education, learning. Um, and ladies, you may even uh, have some rights, maybe. Oh, oh wow. Hey. <laughs> so it starts in Italy in the 1300s, and it will slowly work its way throughout Europe. So different periods... Mm -hmm. Um, of the Renaissance um, are going to take place um, in different countries. So it's not going to be all at the same time. It's gradual. Um, so people begin to question um, these large institutions like the king or the church. Um, we had those wars, the Hundred Years' War, um, the plague, um, and the church couldn't do anything about it. Like kings were dying and praying didn't help. And so people were like, you know what? What can you do, Pope? Like, what is God doing for us? Yeah. Church says you should suffer and like it. And people of the Renaissance and it said, no, you know what, I'm going to live my life on earth here and have some yeah. fun and, and enjoy myself. So it's a secular spirit where you're concerned about your, your world here, not just getting to heaven. Yeah, because you're not sure what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Okay, so why did the Crusades start in Italy? Well, Italy had several advantages. The Crusades? The Renaissance? Yeah, well, well, the oh. Crusades... <laughs> Because of the Crusades, we'll see um, overseas trade. You're funny. I'm sorry. Um, which will least lead to the rise of cities. And in, when you have a lot of people together, you have lots of ideas. And maybe lots of money. Yeah. And then, obviously, uh, the actual location of Italy being in the center of the Mediterranean for all that trade. And it is the home of Rome. Um, and Greece is right next door. So to think about the ancient Greeks and Romans and bringing back their culture and their love of learning, um, it just made sense that it would happen in Italy. And a lot of the great documents that were in Constantinople um, will be brought over to Italy and, and, um, and used f for the Renaissance. Um, so humanism is this new idea, um, this intellectual movement, and focusing on humans and their potential. So not just about the church or, um, sorry, uh, the influence of religion, but what can the humans do, like here on earth, and what can they achieve? Check one, two, check one, two, three, four. Ooh. <laughs> hey, that was new. <laughs> right. So anyways, back to humanism. <laughs> Yeah, I don't even know where to Oh, I don't about. even know. So anyways, Next carrying slide. on those traditions, humans, humanism, we're good. All right. No more announcements. <laughs> uh, some vocabulary terms we'll use this chapter. Um, a patron, that's a wealthy person who supports the artists financially. So you're going to buy art, decorate your house with it. Yeah. Have your portrait taken or painted, shouldn't say taken. Um, Jay, just stay where you are. I'm going to call you in a couple minutes. All right, relax there. Um, Renaissance man or woman, um, usually they excelled in many fields. Um, the women, though, yeah, this guy, the women, though, knew some classics. They were well-read, um, but usually were not, you know, in it. Inspired the art, but didn't paint it. Not to say that there weren't important women, but. So still no equality. Exactly. For women. But um, vernacular uh, is the native or local language. So we said before, under the, um, you know, Roman Empire, Latin, and then all those groups coming in, mixing. So now we've got French and Spanish and Italian. And so speaking in the language of the people. Texting, slang, you guys know. All right, so let's look at some pretty paintings. Uh, we see this family here that are safe on this butterfly ride, <laughs> uh, about to go over the cliff here. So this is an road. example of perspective. perspective. So painters show two or three dimensions on a flat surface. I didn't know they had cars in the Renaissance. <laughs> <laughs> Michelangelo. Uh-oh. Um, if True you can to form. see right here, it's censored. So yes. You, uh, can't look there, but that is the statue of David. Yeah, and the other one is not censored. What's going on there? Um, that is the uh, scene of the Sistine Chapel, and I think it's God um, 
touching Adam. That's right. And um, yeah, sort of the start of the earth according to uh, the Bible. So a lot of the art back then was had a lot of religious um, you know, undertones. All right, Leonardo da Vinci's famous works, uh, the Mona Lisa, yep. him on the left. And on the right, we have the Last Supper, which we've talked about. Yeah, again, that religious theme. Some more paintings. Uh, Leonardo was interested in cadavers, and he would um, open them up and, and draw the he human body. Drew a lot body. of the human body. Uh, we have a design for an airplane there. He was an inventor. Impressive. This is why Leonardo was considered one of those Renaissance men. Oh, great Artist. Point. Oh, why thank you. <laughs> Raphael, another uh, Renaissance man. This is a painting where uh, Jesus' is, his body is coming off the cross. You can just see the beautiful colors and detail. And we have Donatello, who has made the statue of Poseidon. Oh, so, a little, a little short for Poseidon, but... I know. So what do these four Renaissance men make up? The Ninja Turtles. The Ninja Turtles. <laughs> All right, that concludes uh, section one. We'll get on to section two in one second. All right, we're back. Section two, the Northern Renaissance. And if you know your geography, which I know all freshmen do yep. so well. Um, so here's Italy, and the Renaissance will be, uh-oh. Oh, jeez. Uh -oh, oh, will be spreading north into France and England and Spain and Germany. It's going to um, take hundreds of years, but it's going to get there. It'll get there. Um, so... We just said all those oh, things. There we go. Um, so the rulers of these countries will buy art and decorate their castles. And remember, they were called patrons. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, Queen Elizabeth, uh, she ruled for a long time, forty-five years. She supported the arts and literature, and most famous uh, writer in history, most likely uh, William Shakespeare, Shakespeare um, lived in the Elizabethan age. Um, some of his works probably are going to be familiar with in high school. I think you're all going to read Romeo and Juliet as freshmen, so um, be prepared. Nice. Don't just watch the movie. Read yeah, the book. Yeah, exactly. Read the book. It'll be Osab. <laughs> Queen Elizabeth, there she Beautiful. is. Beautiful. She's a nasty lady. She never brushed her teeth. They were all black and rotting and didn't Ew. bathe either. I kind of I guess a lot of people didn't, but, yeah. but she probably had that painting painted um, of her and gave the artist a <laughs> good sum of money. <laughs> That's right. Oh, is that the end of our PowerPoint? Oh. Ooh, Renaissance in England. Nice. We have some graphics here. Oh. I think that's what, is that William Shakespeare? Shakespeare. It's not me, people. Uh-oh. Um, best evidence of the Renaissance in England was the works of Shakespeare. Um, England was strong in portrait painting and architecture. Oh, boy. Uh-oh. Here we go. Oh. The French Ooh, now we go to France. Ooh la la. So we can see the beautiful architecture of the Renaissance. I was going to say, some of the, the castles and churches in France. Um, very beautiful. Absolutely. Are we in Spain? Oh, German. Oh, oh, oh. Ooh. Oh. Lady Madonna and baby Jesus. So again, okay. with the religious overtones. I was just going to say religious themes. Ah, here and we go. Renaissance Spain. Renaissance in Spain. Ooh, look at that castle. Amazing. Kind of glorifying like the beauty of you know being here on Earth and spending your money and... Living life to the fullest, I guess. Absolutely. So this is Philip II's palace. We'll talk about him in chapter 5. That looked five. a lot like my house. Okay, and at the same time, we're going to see uh, the, the advancements in printing. The Chinese have invented printing, um, but now in, over in Germany, they're going to uh, perfect a, a way that, that makes it able to mass produce. They do it like, automatically. Yep. Yeah. Um, so the Chinese was too, too slow. Johann Gutenberg makes improvements that's going to revolutionize uh, printing in Germany. There's a picture of it. It's, I think it said in the book it went from making, oh, there you go, from one book to five months to over 500 in five months. Imagine handwriting every single book. Um, and this is crazy because when you think about, you know, the Bible and interpretations, um, as you're writing, think about when you guys take notes. Maybe you leave out a word or you abbreviate something, and then all of a sudden, books are changing. Maybe stories are changing. So definitely an interesting time. Absolutely. So the legacy of the Renaissance, um, printing allows more information to become available. It's cheap, and people want to learn, and, mm -hmm. and they can communicate better and pass ideas along. See that they wanted books back then. Yeah. You were special if you had a book. That's so. right. Um, so the literacy rates will jump incredibly. Um, the, the laws will be published so people know what, what exactly their rights mm -hmm. are, which is important. Yep, and then people um, are going to be writing essays, printing their works, um, especially their ideas. We'll see that in the next section with Martin Luther, um, being able to print your views and post them for people to see, and it really sparks a lot of um, conversation, which leads to the last one. People begin questioning um, 
the government, political structures, and the church. So religion and um, you know life in general. All right. Well, that concludes section, section. two.